Hello and welcome back to the Coach's Legacy channel. In this video, we'll tackle a difficult topic that often comes up in Selenium, how to run Selenium without a cache. So the issue is that when we're doing things like testing or load testing on our websites, for example, we want to test the performance of a server. So we may want to, you know, repeatedly make requests using Selenium. But the issue is that if the cache is being used, then it's not really going to, you know, stress test the server. So that's just one of the many common uses. I just mentioned this one because it's something I had to do recently. I had to stress test uh, an application I had hosted somewhere on Azure. So I needed to use Selenium to do that. So I had to disable the cache to actually stress test that server. So fair warning, this is gonna be rather tricky because there is no easy way of doing this because there are different browsers that come into play. Each of them have their own thing because Selenium itself doesn't really control the cache. That's like the browser thing. So there's like no easy way of doing this. It's more like hacks or workarounds really, um, at least so far. So there's another issue is that we can't really test, at least not easily test whether the cache is being used or not. That just adds on to the difficulty. So with all that in mind, let's begin. Now, here's just my code that I've set up and we're accessing this example.com website. Okay, nothing fancy. I just have a slightly unique way of setting up my Selenium code using this library called Web Driver Manager. Automatically installs and updates different web drivers for different browsers. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below. Putting that aside, what we're really concerned with is this, okay? So import web driver, then we can do these different options like Chrome options or Firefox options or Safari options, etc. Okay. And we'll try and discuss as many options as we can. Okay. But I'm mainly targeting Chrome. Okay. So some of these might be same across browsers, but, uh, well, we'll see. I'll discuss Chrome and Firefox mainly cause that's what I have installed. So I'm going to add an argument. Okay. This is what we, this is how we pass in custom options to the browser, telling it what we want or controlling certain aspects of it, such as incognito. Now what this is going to do is open up our window in incognito mode. Now this isn't as useful as you think because Selenium already opens up a unique uh, and very clean session. And you know, the browser that it, it, it opens up, regardless of whether you have Chrome, Firefox or whatever, it's already like clean. There isn't, it's not connected to any of your profiles or anything, uh, especially like in Chrome where you have profiles and stuff. So it's kind of like a clean slate anyway, but the incognito mode is still useful in certain scenarios, niche scenarios. So this could help us, uh, you know, avoid the cache issue. And as you could see that window showed up in incognito mode. All right. Other than this, there's another, another option that we can try. It's called disk cache size is equal to zero. Okay. Now what this does is it, this controls the size of the cache. Now what we can do is specify zero is equal to zero. That means that zero bytes will be allocated to the disk for cache. Get it? So that's kind of like disabling the cache. All right, now, just so you guys don't get confused, if you go online, you're, you're gonna see this thing a lot, disable application cache, uh, but this has been deprecated and it's not gonna work anymore, okay? So don't try it. Now, these are the two options that I'm aware of for Chrome. There is something you can do for Firefox, okay? Cause incognito is a Chrome thing. It's not a Firefox thing. So on Firefox, you're gonna do private, okay? And obviously change the other stuff to Firefox, like, um, you know, this is going to be Firefox service, et cetera, et cetera. But the argument is going to be private for Firefox. Now let's try something a little bit different. I've just kept some commands down here just to keep my, just to remember. So what we're going to do is this, what this does is executes a CDP Chrome developer tools. I think it stands for something like that. Um, but basically, yeah, this is Chrome developers, Chrome dev tools protocol. Okay. So this is something that I've seen in quite a few places. And this is personally what I did when I was stress testing with my website. And I noticed that it was working. I combined this with, with another thing, 
um, where I did page. I was reloading the page over and over again to stress test it. So I did page dot reload and then ignore cache true. Actually, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a small r. Okay, so this is something that you can do if during your code you're constantly reloading the same page. Um, but I'm not going to do this right now. I'll just I'm, I'll just remove that because we're not reloading anything. So we'll just leave that like this. Okay, but that's something you can try out. And don't worry, I'll leave all these commands down in, in the description below. Okay, and I'll also li link it to my website. Maybe it will maybe it will write everything down over there in a more concise and neat format. Okay, but other than that, there's another thing. This now this is interesting. Let's discuss another more reliable approach. Imagine that you want to clear the cache as a user. What would you do? You would go to the settings and then clear the cache, wouldn't you? You would just go there. There's a clear cache option in every browser. You can clear the cache, cookies, etc. Right? So why don't we do the same thing here? All we need to do is automate this that process, automate that interaction. So what we're gonna do now is visit the Chrome. I have this URL down here. We're gonna use this. Okay, this is where if you go type this into the Chrome search bar, it's gonna take you to that page. I'm just gonna disable this right now and remove that too because the incognito, um, if incognito is there, uh, there's no cache on incognito. So it's not gonna work. So just remove that. And that doesn't matter, you can leave this in. Or you know what, let's just remove it. Okay, so we'll start from scratch. Now what I'm gonna do is driver dot get here. Okay, and then I'll put a sleep command in here. Let me just run, oops, I didn't mean to put 30, but that's okay. So this is what we get, all right? We get this pop-up and it has the clear data button. Now normally we would want to select this button and then click it, but this button is actually a bit weird. There's this pop-up. This pop-up is a bit weird. Um, it's some, Chrome has some weird way of creating it. As you can see, it's not exactly a normal uh, web element. So this may seem a bit weird, but just follow along with what I'm doing. Okay, and again, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discuss this in detail because this is gonna be different for each browser. It's just the concept that I'm trying to convey over here that's really important. So I'm just gonna duplicate this twice. I want to import from here the keys, import keys for the keyboard automation, then import over here uh, actions, and from here import mouse button. Okay, so come down here now. And what we're gonna do is just put another another sleep in there. It's kind of important to keep these around um, so that you know the browser waits a bit before making any action because it takes time for that pop up to show up, etc. So what we're gonna do is select the element first. We need to find that element driver dot find element. Then we'll find it by XPath. I like using XPath. So we'll select the settings UI. We'll, we're gonna select that pop up. Now what I'm going to do, I've noticed, because this is something you need to figure out. You need to go and take a look at the place and then uh, if you're doing, doing this on Firefox, doing this on Safari, you need to um, examine your browser and then figure out what sequence of commands is needed. What I have noticed on Chrome um, is I need to select the settings UI element, then I need to do element. This is, we have selected element, it's kind of, kind of like stored in here, we have a reference to it. I'm going to send the keys uh, and I am going to, um, what, what was I going to do? Mouse button dot, mouse button dot left, left click. Okay, then I'm going to do keys dot enter. The mouse click I've noticed is kind of like to highlight or to bring the pop-up into you know, make it the default element, the active element, and then we press enter. It's kind of like, you know, put the focus on it. When you have multiple windows, you need to click on the window. Um, you need to click on which window you want to interact with, right? It's kind of like that. So you click on the pop-up uh, and then you press enter. So this is gonna work. Uh, let's try it out. If the pop-up disappears, that means we succeeded. 
there we go all right cool that means the button was pressed and this has been cleared at least i hope so so you're gonna have to do something like this as well on whichever browser you're using you're using firefox or safari whatever uh, edge you need to figure out a chain of commands there is one more idea i can i can pitch to you guys that you can try out so just remove this and now just find a body element okay it doesn't really matter too much which element you find just find like a main element on the page that you want to refresh uh, well that you want to load without a cache so once it's loaded okay and remove that because we're assuming that we're accessing a proper page so assume assuming that this is the page we want to load without a cache so find an element on that page then do this element dot send keys and here we're gonna pass in a string of keys so like on windows um sorry for chrome uh you, you're gonna do control shift and r what this does is forces a hard refresh so it, it won't load it from the cache it's gonna load it from the server so this is a, another thing uh, another thing that you can do and i'm sure there's a, there's a shortcut available on other uh browsers as well okay for something like this i'm actually gonna make an article out of this because there's so much information honestly that um, i think i may have even missed a thing or two so i'm gonna make an article where, on my web website i'll include a link in the description where i kind of compile all of these like for each browser different hacks and different workarounds and different techniques etc so you can guys you guys can check that out if you guys discover any useful tricks yourself uh, then do let me know and i, I can like compile those as well Alright, see you guys in a later video. Bye then.